I've watched a few videos on YouTube about melting aluminium drink cans and I thought I'd have a go with some melting of those cans. Now I've weighed up this bag, it's exactly 2 kilograms and we'll see exactly what the losses are but also the suitability for sand casting and for making billets. To melt all the cans I've decided to use an old furnace that I started 30 years ago melting aluminium that's a coke furnace. You can see on the screen there's a hole for the blast that's the base of the furnace and that is the upper part that holds the coke. Now what I'll have to do is put some moulding sand in between the joints of the fire bricks so the blast won't leak out. As you can see all the cracks in the fire bricks have all been sealed up with moulding sand just using low tech materials it's a very simple furnace I'm just about to light the furnace it's what the coke looks like beginning to happen, aluminium cans are starting to melt ready to knock out the sand mould and we'll see how the casting turned out from aluminium drink cans I was a bit worried that it wasn't going to flow all that distance but it did so it's okay first melt is all over with I think I can make a few improvements. I lost a lot of aluminium to oxide, it burnt. So this time I'm going to put in some solid lumps of aluminium to establish a pool and then push them underneath. So hopefully I won't learn, lose too much aluminium. Here is the second pour. Here is the results from the first pour out of two kilograms of drink cans. I had a 60% loss which is really bad. So to improve that I decided to use angle aluminium angle brackets to try and improve that figure it did marginally improve it 
by the time I've subtracted that weight from the two kilograms, it was 58%. Definitely aluminium cans tend to burn up a lot. That's not a good thing to melt down in the backyard. This test I'm going to test between the two sand casting to see which one is the strongest. This is the first pour, straight cans. Not much strength, but it does bend a fair way. This is the second pour. It's been alloyed with those aluminium angle brackets. More strength, but far more brittle. In this next test, I will see how well the aluminium billets will machine. This billet was straight aluminium cans. First one, machined quite well. This is a billet from the second pour, so it's had those aluminium angle brackets mixed in with it. We'll see how this one machines. That one does not machine as good as the other one. We'll have a quick look at the leftovers. The first pour was this loose black stuff. That was all the coatings and paint. But the second pour was no, was very different. There was a lot of metal entangled up with the slag. And I feel if I use a proper kind of flux, the recovery rate would be a lot higher. Personally for me, I don't think I would bother using aluminium cans as a source of metal, but other people may disagree. The other note is, can you put on the comment section how many other people have done that and if they have such a bad recovery rate like I did.